All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is make a header and a footer. So in an HMI, when you think about a, a graphic, uh, HMI graphic, generally you have a header and a footer. One a header would be generally displaying stuff of that, like alarms, maybe even tracking, a way to go forward and backwards. And then a footer would be something like, say for instance, navigation or stuff of that nature. So um, in the instance of what we're doing in, in the HMI client in Factory Talk SE, which is site edition, we're going to have to have a client, right? Which a client is, again, comes back and that that's something you make. We're on the back end now, we're in the studio version, right? So we're in the studio uh, network distributed. So if you think about it, there's two forms of this software. There's the studio version, which is the developmental side of things, right? And then there's the client side of things, which is going to be the HMI client, which could be a Versa view, it could be a display, it could be a computer, it could be anything. In our case, what we're gonna be doing in our trainer is doing this off of a computer. Okay, so we're not actually gonna be doing this off of a Versa view, anything like that. You can't program necessarily off of Versa view, but uh, again, you're going to be programming off of the back end of the, that's what you're calling the, the Factory Talk Studio, right? Whether it be ME, which is Machine Edition, or the SE version, which is what we're using here, which is the Site Edition, right? So again, when it comes down to it, this is why we're talking about, and we'll talk about how to make a client, how to build a client, stuff of that nature. But again, when you think about it, when you've seen HMIs before, and you will see them, if you haven't already, you will have a top header and a footer. Right, the footer is definitely navig navigation, generally speaking, and sometimes you even have a sidebar. So we need to make a, another display, being that we have this one made right now. Well, we're going to make some more stuff on that, but first we need to go ahead and make our, our a second screen. Right. So our header we're going to actually have as a different screen. We're going to make a screen for a header and a screen for our footer. Right. So when we make our client, we can call those independently. Right. When we start the client, it will call the header. The middle screen and then the footer right and i'll show you how to do that based upon a macro um, as we go but first we want to go ahead and, and make our header what we're going to do is just go to uh, display right here we're going to change this uh this display to a specified size so the pixels that we want to actually specify to are 1280 so 1280 pick our 80 pixels and then we're gonna have, so that's the width of it, right? So if you think about a, a screen, a natural HMI screen or a computer these days or the natural full screen, screen resolution is going to be about 1280, right? So um, it, it depends. Uh, some of older systems could be like, maybe some like 1024, but again, 90% of what you're going to moving forward is going to be a 1280. So keep that in mind. That is the reason why we're deeming it to go to the actual width of 1280. Now the height we're gonna to change to about 90, um, and that's just based upon the height of what you want, right? Uh, we're gonna come in here and change this. We're gonna get the background color to something like that. We'll keep navigation tracking on because we're going to be using that in navigation tracking. And we wanna come down here and change this to basically an up update speed of maybe even half a second is probably good. Now we wanna turn off the system menu and the minimize menu because we don't want to give the operator the availability of actually you know getting off of the screen right we want to have complete control over the HMI as we you know as the operator is actually using it right they we don't want to give them the ability to shut down anything when they don't need to because they're going to they're going to have the question how do I start it back up right so you want to have full control so you're going to have uh, this and maximize the screen to runtime and that's basically the just right here so we'll come in here now the our, our reason i wanted to build it like this is show you this instance right so when i come back in here i when i if i were to shut this off right now and save it then it would come back up and size to this properly now you can also size this properly if you want to but i wanted to show you this way because you will have screens where you come in here and you have to change this, right? You have to change the width of this, just like just like what I'm doing here. So, and I say this because sometimes people hide stuff in the screens and you need to open it up. You need to kind of just, you know, get below that. So the active screen is what's up above this yellow line right now. 
So how do I know that? Is because the uh, height is only 90 pixels. That's the distance distance between the top of the screen and and the bottom of this yellow mark. Down below here is not valid, so it would actually be just like that. Now we can actually save this. And we'll save this as header, and then we'll close it, and then we'll reopen it. Now when we reopen it, it automatically will size to the right size based upon what we've done. So now, if we think about it, this will be our header. Okay. So, but what we want to do is we want to add some components to this header, just some natural components that we want to have to make it look kind of nice and, and um, you know, just have it where you can navigate through. We will eventually come back and put an alarm banner up here, but in the meantime, to keep this video short, sweet to the point, we want to make sure we actually get a, just a couple components. What we want to do is come in and, and get a, an object, and we want to go down to advanced and actually it's I believe it's a navigation so you want to make sure that you uh, you actually let's, let's see the key and this would be might be an advanced we want date and time is one of them we want to have date and time which we can have over here I like to keep that over on the right hand side and then we'll have this just like this what we'll do is we'll change the dimensions of the date and time so we'll do navigation in just a second, but I want to do the date and time right now while we're, we just ran, um, ran over it. But what this does is it, it gives you the ability to change the format. So again, I like to take away the, the, the lines and I like to change this to none and then do it just like that. So now you can see it, right? And now you can change it to bold if you want to change it to bold. Um, and then you can you know obviously make it wider if you want to make it wider you can change the width of it right here you can easily come in here and adjust the pixels right here now you can also adjust the pixels based upon just you know widening it right out right here as well you could just do that but instead you can also adjust the pixels off the common elements up here so I wanted to kind of give you an, a base element of you know a couple different areas you can change you can change the t where it starts this would be the top position up and down. This would be the left and right. So this would be left and right where it actually goes. So if I want to change it, move it over a little bit, I could do that just like this and you see it move over. Now the height again is the height of the actual component or the actual what you're doing. And you can also come back here to general and change the format of what you're doing. So the format, again, you can change that to many different things. You can say, you can say the date, you can say the date, the time. Um, in our case, uh, the date and time is, is perfectly fine, right? So we can say this is the date 1, uh, one 20, you know, 2021, and this is currently 1052. So, uh, but you can, I just want to give you the indication right here that you can change this if you wanted to, just like this, right? So I can come right here and change the date and format depending upon which country you are in you may be wanting a different format um, because everybody looks at formats slightly different depending upon what region you're in and it all basically depends on that right so I just want to give you a base indication of that's one of the key components that I like to have on my header we will actually be having that on this header as well so um, and you can change however you want like if you want this to be a little bit wider you can change this to like 11 or 12 but personally you know I think uh, anywhere between like 10 or 12 is perfectly fine. But again, we'll come back and make all of our components and then we'll get to see how it looks the best, right? Now that we have that done, what we want to do is, is come over here to the, back over here to our objects. And then the actual navigation we want to do is, I believe the navigation is in buttons. And you want to come over here to the push button and grab navigation. Now we want to draw this out and get this, I don't know, uh, roughly a, a, a base size, right? So we kind of want to get it just a, a, a decent size. Again, we're going to change our border. So let's get this right here and, and we'll, we'll make this kind of, you know, look a slightly decent. So we'll come in here, kind of put it just like that. Well, we're going to change this, see how it indicates what, what screen you can check. So one we're going to make for previous screen. And then, then we're going to have the next screen and then we're going to have navigation history. 
So we're going to have all these in place. What we're going to do is come over here and we're going to put the icon. We're just going to type or merely type it in. And we're going to use our shift key. And this would be the arrow key, right? So we'll apply that and we're going to bold, make it bold. And then come over here and expand that up to, let's say, 16. Let's see, I think that, that looks halfway decent. I think maybe 18, even bigger probably. So this is where you can kind of size how you want things. And this is uh, generally while, you know, a lot of things that you, you want to know how they're built, this is exactly, you know, how they're, they're actually gone and, and built, right? So this 24 is a little too big. 22 uh, looks like it's a little too big and 20 looks just right okay so that's that's that one now we can come over here and make this and we can basically copy it I want to have this over here just on the very top uh, right hand corner or left hand corner we'll hit control C control V that way we have another one okay we get them the same exact size and what we're going to do is we're going to change this to next screen and then we're going to change this arrow to the opposite arrow we're just going to type in the shift key and then the arrow key on our keypad this keeps it just that simple and that way we have our we changed our action over here which is display and now all we have to do is line these up and then we're going to use our line tool get these up top and we need to make one more right so if we could we can take this control C and control V again and then this one is going to be the actual we're gonna make this a little bit bigger because this is going to be the the actual history so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna use this as alarm history and we're gonna actually call this instead of using an arrow key we're gonna type in the word history because this will be a drop down so when you use history, it will show a actual drop down, and we need to change the font size because we want to have it where it's it's re readable. It's a little too big right there, so that's that's pretty good. I don't know, maybe maybe even like 14 is fine for that. So then we'll we'll have to line these up. I like to what I like to do is pick the top one, and then come over here. I like to pick the the one I want at the very top. Is it so that if, if, say for instance, if I wanted this one at the very top, and then I'll move the rest of these all the way down, and then I'll come over here and get all three of them and align to top so that they all are equal. Now, here at the, this right here, you can actually center, you can align to center, or you can properly space things, right? So it's really cool to see this. See, this would be line to center, and this would be properly spacing things. So um, let's actually get that. Uh, actually, undo this. Come in here, undo it again, undo it again. This undo button is very helpful, and you can see that right there. But you can easily space these things out, right? So let's control. Actually, it's uh, shift. Actually, not shift. Let's hold it. Go back right quick. Control, and you can right click. The cool thing is. What I like to do too is I come over here and I'm a big fan of coming, if I'm doing this, I, I like to space. So you can space vertically or you can space horizontally. So vertically obviously is up and down, horizontally is side to side. So you can get evenly spaced these and that way you get things looking and feeling the way you want them to, right? So we'll save this as we have it right now. So we have the date and time, we have the alarm history. We're gonna head, we're gonna put up some more stuff in here but first, again, what we want to do is come in and, and put our names, like we want to give our project name. Let's go ahead and do that real quick on this video. And then we'll, on the next video, we'll continue building this out. And then we'll finish this the header out. And then we'll finish out. We'll come in and make our footer. And then that way we can see everything come together nice and easy and not take up too much time. Because I want to make these, you know, these videos where they're compact and they're easy to read, easy to understand, and also where you can come back to a certain point and see, oh, this is where we built our header, or oh, this is where we added elements on, right? So let's call this, this is going to be the batching station.
project and we're just giving it a name right now um, we want to make it bold and just give it a name so our four color we're going to change being that we can't see it we want to change the four color to white and we want to change the font to a 14 that looks pretty good so now we have that right there so we have that and you can move this down if you wanted to actually let's not uh, let's go back on that undo it that's the cool thing about the undo make sure you click this tab over here but this is the cool thing about the undo I like to line these two up so that these two have aesthetically a lineup properly as far as that goes it makes it just look that much better when they're actually running so right now we have our header so if you can think about it it's going to be it's going to look if we have this screen just like this it's going to somewhat look like this when we get done and this will be full screen so this would be the full screen just like this and it would look similar like that but again we're going to add some more elements to this on the very next video because I, I want to keep these short and sweet to the point and again we've seen how to do navigation and that's the reason we do navigation tracking on each screen so on the screen elements this is the reason why we're doing the tracking so this checkbox right here is is the tracking of the navigation on every screen we're doing track navigation so if you have 80 screens you can you can go forward and backwards on the client you know as many times as the history has has actually tracked it right but you can't do anything the history hasn't tracked but it's a good 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 feature to add because it really helps the operator go back and forth just like what we do on the undo and uh, stuff like that just like browsing the web you know if you think about it that way you ever get on a website you go forward and backwards and you go you know you use the the Chrome browser or something and you you say oh well I want to go back to this other URL it's the same exact thing we're doing here except we're doing it with a screen so it's really really helpful for the operator in navigation and that's really a key component in and getting things sound and getting your success with your project right so the more user friendly you are the better you're going to be with your actual success rate right with with having building a, a foundational uh, HMI client or HMI system that is working doesn't matter if you're using ME or SE we are using the uh, SE again I can't stress that enough that we are factory talk SE but uh, again when it comes down to it user friendly is going to be the key to everything so you can program it 1800 different ways but as long as you're user friendly you'll be successful it doesn't have to be technical it just has to be user friendly so we'll come back and make this um, finish out this header and we'll come back and add it to our header and footer and we'll add this to our application and we'll actually run it to see how it works so uh, again we don't have any PLC work done but we will actually just start it up to make sure the client actually works right so that's going to be uh, part of this actual series and then we'll come back and fine-tune everything after we have the PLC logic done all right well we'll see you guys on the next one